On our morning show from WRCO, we have some uh, big news, uh, some good news from the Richland Center Fire Department about uh, a special event that is coming up. Uh, some good news about a, a community donation as well, which has uh, gotten them some new equipment. Uh, in the studio today with us, uh, we have Ryan and Julie Karens from Julie Karens State Farm Insurance. We have Darren Steinmetz from the uh, Fire Department, who is Captain and Fire Prevention Coordinator. Seems like we, we just did this interview, Julie. We did just last year, right? Yeah, having a little deja vu sitting here but um yeah and it went so well last year at the end of the day we kind of all looked at each other like we should really just do this again let's make this a tradition you know an annual thing so that's what's brought us back here we're gonna do it again and when is the event and tell us about it yeah it's saturday uh, april 13th 11 to 1 so it'll be in our parking lot we're gonna have of course hot dogs fire trucks fire department um some other miscellaneous probably be surprise things there but um the biggest piece is just For the fire department and for us to work together because we have kind of that same mission, right? Prevention, protection, and um, just work together, I guess. Yeah. So fire department will be there. Of course, we'll have some swag, but food and swag, right? (laughs) And Ryan, you're involved as well. Is that, uh, you're grilling again this year, are you? What's going on? Um, I believe I was just told that I was grilling again. Okay. So I'll be grilling again. And uh, (laughs) with the fire department there, it's kind of safe then. (laughs) True, true, true. (laughs) Yes. 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 Uh, Coincidence? Uh, Maybe not. Maybe not. I don't know. (laughs) Yeah. We'll be, we'll be grilling the uh, best hot dogs in the world from the Rich and Locker, the all oh, yeah. beef hot dogs. So, yeah. Good stuff. On the 13th. And uh, it's it's a big day for, for the uh, State Farm Organization, isn't it, Ryan? It is. It, it, it always is. And it's great partnering with the fire department and uh, making sure that we're being proactive in preventing fires because nobody wants a fire. And in your business, in your line of work, Oof. smoke detectors are yeah. number one, aren't they? Yeah, we see a re- you know, obviously there's kind of a consistent um, common denominator when we see a total loss of a home. Specifically is, you know, how was the smoke detector involved? Was it involved? Was it on? Were the batteries? So, you know, I think specifically on the 13th, that is a, kind of like the... The key focus is the smoke detectors. So we're working with the fire department on getting some more detectors in their hands. Um, I think there's some numbers that they'll share about how many they were able to give away last year. But back to your original, yes, we, you know, obviously in the insurance industry, we're all about prevention, keep the risk low. And smoke detectors are a huge variable in that. First and foremost, it's to save a life, Mm -hmm. but also structures, uh, you know, quick warning and how far they are from town and those kind of things that comes into play. Doesn't yeah, it? it's huge. It's a, it'll make or break the whole situation. I mean, we've seen that too, um, unfortunately. And, you know, it's uh, obviously about lives. It, it's huge. You know, when, when we lose someone, it's a really a pain point. So small pieces like a smoke detector make a world of difference. You have the uh, opportunity on, on your lot. You've got uh, ample space there yeah. to put on a big event like yeah. this, don't you? Yeah, someone, I won't name names, maybe initials or RC, had this great <laughs> idea about that location being so um, so critical to being able to give back to our community. Um, someone, I won't name names, initials JC, drug her feet a little bit because I wasn't so sure about how that would go, but it's been crit- ugh, just such a huge piece to us being able to ha- use our platform to give back. So yes, the parking lot, you know, we keep saying parking lot party, parking lot, you know, so it's been great. Perfect space. And what are some other things you'll have uh, there? Is it going to be a surprise on the 13th? Uh, a few key pieces we're still working out the details oh. on, but for sure swag, for sure hot dogs, for sure some, I don't know, a couple trucks. Is that what you're thinking, Darren? I don't You guys are thinking. So I'll let Darren speak on that part. But um, so things to look at, things to, you know, be able to get your hands on, hopefully. Yeah. Are we going to have those cool kid fire helmets again? Absolutely. Cool kid fire helmets are going to be there. Oh, oh. And what about those those poo poo bags for the dogs oh they're in the shape of a fire hydrant and so there's and then there's the poo bags are inside of it so those are a really big hit and we were able to get our hands on more of them when i say we i mean ryan was able to get his hands on more of those so yeah maybe some shades some cool sunglasses little little surprises mm-hmm. i just gave away a couple but yes kid kids love those kind of things they yeah. they, they love the fire department too and yeah and yeah the and paraphernalia if you, there if you check out our facebook page there's some really cute pictures of um our i say she's our office baby um parker and she's in the fire department she's inside there in the trucks with the hats on and stuff and yeah it was really cool but um the kids do love them so yeah and i think too i have some notes lots and lots of notes written down but i, I think one thing i wanted to point out is that 
when Ryan and I went to the fire department a couple days ago <clears throat> for those pictures, it was almost like a warm fuzzy or like kind of like hitch in the feels when I walked through there because I don't know if I've ever walked through there. And to see all the trucks and to see the gear, it really, I don't want to be like all emotional here, but it did kind of choke me up a little bit thinking like, wow, like seeing the gear and how these people are willing to risk their lives for us. Yeah. And so I thought, gosh, if we can work together to proactively support them too, so they don't have to go to fires, um, it really just kind of hit me like this is, this is a good thing. So yeah. No tears were shed. Good. <laughs> but I just I applaud them. I think it's huge to be able to, to support them and say thank you. And these events allow us to say thank you. Do you guys have an extra large helmet, too, that I can wear or not? Yeah. Um, no. It, I, I think if you remember last year, we took a picture with them out in the lobby here. And it I broke. don't think I don't think uh, they'll fit your head or my head. Okay. Yeah, the, they the just, ones that they we just, tried. They just sit on top of our heads. <laughs> well, so. there's, there's so much brain mass yes, up there. Yes, yes. <laughs> Well, let's move on to the yes. real topic at hand, yes, the fire please. department. We have Captain Steinmans here. Darren, uh, this is a big event for you and the fire department, isn't it? Oh, it's a, it's an excellent time to get out into the community. We always are looking for more and more opportunities to get out. And uh, uh, the opportunity, we just want to thank the Cairnses again because it's, it's, it's huge. Their lot is a perfect spot because it's right on the corner. It's a huge space. Uh, being able to get in the public eye. Um, being able to just get back, give back to our community in a different way. Um, it's... And thank you for the nice little sentiment there. That that means a lot to us because we do we do care about that. We 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 don't really look at it as as uh, risking your life. Well, you know, I mean, yeah, yeah we don't. I, I, there is always that, and and but we it's a it's a love affair, I guess, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, just been doing it for almost thirty years. It's twenty seven years, so it's just been it's 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 just a good way to get back to to my hometown in a way that not many people can. So mm -hmm. I just feel very uh, blessed to be able to do it as long as I have so far. I know you love what you do, but you'd be better off if you just had photo opportunities like Julie had and, you know, you just dusted the trucks, right? right. Well, yeah. I mean, if we didn't run on calls, A, we wouldn't be as trained as we are. Um, but at the same time, yeah, we would love to be able just to go in the community and not have to go to the calls and make house calls, as they say. But um, that that's part of it. And unfortunately, that is a... a it plays a huge role in what we have to do and have to adapt and grow uh, different things, different from anywhere from electric vehicles now to, you know, the different styles of homes with the open open areas now compared to like a really tight old farmhouse type look. You know, it just makes a big difference on how we attack it. Um, and it we, we take a lot of pride in, in keeping up with as much training as possible. Well, let's talk about uh, a real important reminder, um, the, the home safety. We want to talk about that and, and smoke detectors. Yeah. Um, I'm going to get my notes here. Okay. Um, so, yeah, last year we uh, uh, the department adapted a, a home safety program where uh, a couple of the members would go on a, on a prearranged visit where someone requested that we come and, and we uh, went and talked about fire prevention tips with them. Um and we did put some detectors in homes, in quite a few actually. So we actually did visit 32 homes last year, uh, gave and and put up uh, or not put up, but we we uh, supplied 48 detectors last year. So that's huge. Um, and and the tech detectors, thank goodness, we have programs like this. Uh, you know, budgets are budgets. You know, and, and and being able to get get extra stuff like this that isn't going against our our budget number, it's huge. And so we're actually helping. A community stay safer so we don't have to visit them um and i, I think it's a it's a huge uh with now with the ultra high pressure truck that's going to be um in service in the next few months and uh, that's just another tool for the toolbox so to speak and uh it's huge if someone is listening darren uh and and they'd like to they're curious about you guys coming out there or bringing a detector what, what should they do well um we were going to have a sign up there um, to if they want to have us come in and do do this home survey stuff with them. Um, it's definitely up to them. They do not have to do that. But um, we would like to get as many as possible in 2024 just because it's 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 a great program. Um, it's a great tool to be able to get fresh detectors in your home um, and maybe some things that we get tunnel vision with and in our homes that we don't think there might be a fire hazard actually from a, a fresh pair of eyes coming in saying, yeah, this could be better. Uh, it's, this is what you can do to make it better. Um, and it, 
it's going to help us in the long run. Um, uh, let's see. More notes, because Lord knows. Um, uh, yeah, so we'll have a sign-up available for the home safety visit um, at, on site there next Saturday. Um, and and really, the biggest thing is we'll have our, our UHP truck as well, which is um, and along with. And I can't guarantee, but uh, there is a hint of a dog that might be there. Mm. I heard that as well. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I heard yeah that so as well. there is a good chance that mm-hmm. it might make an appearance. So mm-hmm. anybody that likes it, Phil, I know you like it. I do. So, I uh, mean, <laughs> yeah, it's a great photo op opportunity. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Hot dogs and the. Uh, and the dog. The dog. The dog. The dog. Yeah, Fire exactly. dogs. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. In a little while, we're going to talk to to Chief Gauld about uh, some some great things, uh, some exciting news for the department. Um, and uh, the upkeep is something that just kind of baffles me, Darren. Uh, all the suits that that your people have to wear and everything like that. How often do you have to update those? Well, uh, NFPA guidelines and all the National Fire Protection Agency guidelines. Uh, we kind of go off of those, and we have to, you know, gear gear. Every 10 years, um, it includes the helmets and boots, the pants, the coat, um, can run anywhere near $4,000 to outfit a firefighter now these days. So um, that's where that budget number comes in again. So the, the, we were so blessed in this community to have the donations that we get. Um, and we used to have a, a dance. We kind of transitioned to a more family friendly event at the, at the drive-in movie in the fall in, in the fall, like August. Um, and that has helped a ton with, with equipment and, uh, but yeah, the upkeep's huge because you got to, you know, we're very blessed with the apparatus we have in the, in the station. Um, we are the, the hub of the county so we uh it, we are just happy to be able to help our neighbors um we have our mutual aid departments that we uh, we get help constantly from and they help us or we help them so it's it's a good a give and take and but yeah it can be four thousand dollars to uh outfit a firefighter just for the protective gear alone in the time that you've been a member, Darren, uh, and you still seem like a kid to me, but now you're kind of like... In the I mid- bless your heart. Yeah. Say, He's an adult. In the middle. <laughs> yeah, middle aged, I think is what they say. Maybe even in the upper echelon of uh, some of the department members. But, you know, you've seen a lot of changes, and, and you don't just go out on fire calls, do you? No, and in all honesty, uh, uh, we, with the protection or the prevention programs we do have put in place... Um, I like to think that we have knocked down our our structure fires actually quite a bit. Um, We go on a lot of car accidents. Um, Probably two-thirds of our calls are traffic incidences, Um, whether it's the jaws of life or if it's uh, just traffic control, cleanup type things. But we run probably two-thirds of our calls, which is about, uh, I don't know, Scott will get into it, about 220 calls a year probably around that range. So. And that includes, you know, uh, pages for carbon monoxide and mm-hmm. and during the winter time. So that's another huge detector program that we'd like to, you know, maybe look into is getting people equipped with carbon monoxide detectors also because silent deadly gas that no one knows it's there until it's starting to make you sleepy and make you sick and then you're you're kind of uh, on a short leash in regards to the health of you. So I mean, uh, so. Obviously, in my time, yeah, we ran a lot of fire call, like structure fires when I first got on probably 27 years ago. But um, now it's definitely more highway based accidents accidents, and um, uh, we do have we're kind of the jack of all trades. So we we can get the majority of a good amount of people in a short period of time. So we'll get called for lost like a dog that's trapped up on a hill or something is mm-hmm. one or some water rescue stuff that we have trained some and we're getting better and better on our training but we we obviously need more training on stuff like that and we'll do that uh confined space a lot of different things that we do so i mean it's not just fires anymore it's not just putting water on fire it's a lot of other things yeah we owe a debt of gratitude that's for sure the other people that i think of in the background not not everybody that's on the fire department is self-employed i mean your employers uh, really do a lot for you too don't they? the employers are huge in our community to be able to allow us to go on these fire calls um we can't thank them enough because we've got people that are in throughout you know, industry and um, some are self-employed. Most of them. It used to be where you had majority of the fire department members were self-employed business owners. So 
they were, yeah, they were readily available. Of course, they weren't making money either when they were going on these fire calls because then they were losing business. So, um, but now our our industry people like Rockwell and Schreiber and stuff like that, and we've got multi, you know, foremost, we've got wonderful employers who will allow, um, like Rockwell, will allow will allow some people to leave if if available. So during the daytime, that's huge for us because you know I work in an office and sometimes I'm not able to leave and so it's um they are very nice to let me leave sometimes so it, it's it's a give and take you know um but we, yeah we can't thank them enough that's a huge partner for us and um, we're very thankful have you been doing some school visits this year um we did last fall we always go in the fall um yeah we visited the 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 main schools and we go to Ithaca as well and uh, anybody in our fire protection district so um yeah it's it's always fun. I love fire prevention. That's my gig. You know, I just, mm-hmm. I love talking to the kids. Uh, I, I did get reminded like uh, someone, what was it, from Ithaca 20 some years ago mentioned to their their mom, uh, I believe was, uh, yeah, if your house starts on fire, you're supposed to stop, drop and roll. Wasn't exactly what I said, <laughs> um, but I do remember the conversation. Um but um, yeah, that will not help your house from burning. It's yeah, just yeah. you know, totally different, <laughs> totally, totally different thing. Totally different thing. Um, but thank you for listening. Uh, <laughs> you no, were taken it, out of context a little. bit. A little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah that happens from time to time. Yeah. Uh, but no, we, we we love to get out in the community. Um, we've got our um, uh, class A uniforms now that we got recently, and. I'd like to think we look sharp and it look more uniform now. And so when we go to events and go to, I'm not, uh, some events that we'll, we'll have those class A uniforms on and it'll look good. I, I would like to see prior prevention people go out to the schools and those things. I think it looks sharp. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, we'll be, and we'll be out in May in front of our station getting some photos. So I'm guessing if you do a drive by, you'll see a bunch of people in a bunch of monkey suits, but unfortunately, you know, no, it's, a, it's a really a sharp look now. So I'm glad we were able to progress and get those as well and you usually have your open house uh the weekend of the rodeo yeah yeah mm-hmm. the saturday of the rodeo um we'll have that again this year and um i'm not sure on the date though but it is in june 15th uh, yep. june 15th yep okay well i guess that's our open house date <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah we'll have we'll have uh snacks and stuff and, and just let you come into the station we'll have our our swag um that we'll be able to give away as well um and just be able to see the kids that's that's a great time to see the kids they come in and they're looking at all the stuff and they're just oh well starry-eyed you know and it's it's great it's nice to be able to to have that effect on people um it's kind of a it's an eco boost a little bit for for us you know and oh, yeah. uh, so those we, are the fun events so the pr events are the- well the pr is huge um and the big thing about our we see people in their worst days and we would love to see them in their better days. And that's an event like this coming up next Saturday. That's huge for us. We'll be able to go out and we'll see smiling faces. We're not seeing tears. You know, we may see some tears and Scott will be there. I'm just kidding, Scott. I'm just kidding. Oh, actually, Scott, I don't know if you will And I feel be like there. Scott said, I think Scott was like, I don't need to be in person with you guys. I'll just, you know, get away from all the jabs. Yeah. I'm probably going to get that day. And I'm like, no one's going to jab you. Well, we just Yeah, we, we did. Sorry, Scott. Well, we got we to gotta mention it, you know. Yeah. It's all so right. much for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <Yeah. laughs> are you going to have some things on display at uh, Julie Karen Safe Farm Insurance? Oh, we are. We're going to have our new ultra high pressure truck that we're going to be uh, putting into service in the next couple months that'll be sitting out i'm i'm not 100 percent sure weather permitting we might have the uh the white ford out there again like we did last year um but we'll have a couple we'll have a couple trucks sitting out there um and we'll have people in uh being able to tour the trucks and look at the trucks also and and uh, because our guys love to do that they they guys and gals because we do have gals too and that's Mm -hmm. great so um our firefighters that is the proper terminology that i should be using because i'm equipped with the tech school stuff and i'm also supposed to be saying firefighters so i should say <laughs> guys and gals is what i usually say um no we'll have a great turnout hopefully and um and i'm obviously the best hot dogs in the world uh-huh. will be there ever ever yep. thank you craig from the richland locker yeah. yeah and then ryan's grilling skills i mean just you can't get over that right yeah. just the combo <laughs> are you ready, Ryan? Sparks are going to fly in a good way. Yeah, I'm ready. I think I have to find a couple LP tanks, but other than that, I'm ready. Oh, that's okay. All. That's all. That's fine. That's a small thing. We can yeah. find that. So. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Should be a great event. Anything else that you guys would like to add about it, Julie? I know. I just think, uh, 
like you were saying, like you you see folks typically on like their worst days, right? So we're hoping on that day that it can be just the warm fuzzies, getting to see the firefighters, getting to see the gear, seeing the trucks, so that if it ever happens that they show up at your home, there's a little less, you know, like shock factor perhaps. But um, we were we saw a customer after one of his horrible um, losses. And he said he'll never forget seeing the fire truck and how he just instantly felt relief and like dropped to his knees and was like, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. So I think if we can show that on Saturday, April 13th, like when you see these folks, like it's going to be okay. Like if the worst happens, I'm going to be okay. Cause you have, we have who we have and what we have for, for gear and whatnot and trucks. But, um, yeah. So I don't know. Mm-hmm. But I could go on, but I don't want to get emotional. So there we go. <laughs> we, we do a lot of joking about it, but we certainly are oh, very yeah. fortunate, aren't yes, we, Ryan? We, We're very fortunate. Um, yeah. You know, being at the fire station uh, the other day, it, it's, it is a very humbling ex- experience. And when you see all the lockers with all the fire gear, I was going to ask again, Brent told me, but how many how many uh, firefighters are on the... Well, we just, uh, and Scott will probably mention this as well, we did put on we were blessed we put on nine more people uh, at their last meeting monday night and um we're up to almost 50 now so what a testimony right so so seeing all the lockers with all the gear and then talking about the gear like you already have of you know how expensive it is but i think one of the highlights uh for me was the high pressure truck that's Mm -hmm. amazing (laughs) but uh the washing machine julie saw the washing machine the Heavy most commercial and it extracts the water it, out of the yes it ext- extracts the, all the all the bad stuff all the water mm-hmm. out and then we have the the gear dryer as well so we can get a, a set of gear back in service within a couple hours wow. uh versus having to wait days mm-hmm. after washing them and having them pulled apart and you know and just it's such a blessing to have that because you take gear out for a couple hours you don't know if you're going back out in a couple hours right. and mm-hmm. so to to take it from a couple days down to a few hours is huge and i can testify that gear is heavy oh i know i put on a whole uniform in the tank and i tried to do some squats and i was like somebody help me up <laughs> it was crazy so i that too is amazing how yeah. heavy everything was. it adds about 40 40 plus pounds yeah. with all the gear on that's crazy and then like, you add water to weight to that yeah right. and then that's right. even a bit more yeah. and if you have to climb climb a mm-hmm. ladder or whatever or i'm thinking mm-hmm. carrying the hose i'm like okay throw yeah. me a hose brent and he's like you really want to try i'm like no i probably shouldn't but <laughs> it's it's i applaud you all well thank you i yeah. really thank applaud you. you all thanks for what you do thank yeah. you appreciate yeah. that bet. thanks for coming in you guys yes we, our pleasure thanks for having us you we appreciate it and we are going to have chief Galdon coming up next uh, he he wanted to come in solo so he didn't get uh i don't blame him jabbed here yeah. <laughs> i don't blame him <laughs> don't blame him. Too late. Ryan and Julie Karens <laughs> from Julie Karens State Farm Insurance and Darren Simons, uh, Captain and Fire Prevention Coordinator for the Richland Center Fire Department. The morning show continues next.